Hello, my name is Marco Bites, and I will present the Live Gene 1 Forest Genetic Monitoring Manual. Forest Genetic Monitoring Manual is the key deliverable of the Live Gene 1 project. It is a very comprehensive document that was built upon experiences with implementation of the genetic monitoring system in the Live Gene 1 project. The purpose of this manual is to provide detailed instructions on how to carry out all necessary activities for establishment and performing the forest genetic monitoring, from selecting suitable plots to data analysis and eventually possible forest management actions to be taken. First, we shall have a look at the table of contents of this document. The manual is divided into 10 different chapters. Introduction, Forest Genetic Monitoring Plot Selection, Plot Establishment and Maintenance, Indicators and Verifiers, Fieldwork and Observations, Laboratory Analysis, Cost Assessment of Forest Genetic Monitoring, Decision Support System, Genetic Monitoring Guidelines, and finally, Annexes. We shall focus on chapters 2 to 9 in this presentation. Chapter 2 Forest Genetic Monitoring Plot Selection. In this chapter, we will find information on the recommended number of plots for the genetic monitoring per species, per country, per environmental classification zone, the number of trees per plot and a comprehensive list of plot selection criteria. Chapter 3 – Plot Establishment and Maintenance Instructions on how to establish forest genetic monitoring plot in the field are presented in this chapter. And we have two separate entries here, one for stand-forming species and the other for scattered species. Plot establishment for stand-forming species is generally a more straightforward process, whereas for scattered species it is more complicated due to their scattered distribution. Also detailed is the establishment of natural regeneration plots and instructions on how to perform all other work that needs to be done during the plot establishment, such as labeling of trees, georeferencing and different initial measurements. Instructions on how to maintain genetic monitoring plots are also given both regular maintenance and long-term maintenance. Additionally, there is a subchapter on installation of meteorological data loggers. Chapter 4 deals with indicators and verifiers. Now, indicators and verifiers, in essence, represent the core of the genetic monitoring system. And in this chapter, you will find descriptions of each indicator and the monitored parameter with significance of each of this parameter for the forest genetic monitoring and how different indicators and monitored parameters are interlinked into the three different monitoring levels that we devised. Chapter 5 Fieldwork Chapter on the fieldwork includes instructions how to perform fieldwork outside of the plot establishment. So, we are dealing with instructions on how to perform field observations such as phenology observations, natural abundance observations and measurements, and also instructions on how to correctly collect samples, adult trees, natural regeneration, samples of seed, both for genetic analysis and the seed testing. Chapter 6 is a very comprehensive chapter and deals with laboratory analysis, starting with how to properly handle and store samples and extracted DNA, also long-term storage. Selection of genetic markers is also given here. And of course, recommendations 
on how to perform all stages of molecular genetic analysis. Protocols for seed testing are listed, which are based on the ISTA protocols. Data analysis and interpretation, a very important subchapter, is included. And here I would like to point out to an R script that was developed during the Live Genome project. Now this R script allows the calculation of all of the monitored parameters without the need to use different types of genetic software. Also included in this chapter are instructions on data storage and description of the database that was developed during the Live Gene 1 project. Chapter 7 is on cost assessment. Now, cost assessment will be detailed in a separate presentation later on during the day. But in essence, in the cost assessment chapter, we look at how the total cost of genetic monitoring is affected by different factors, by different cost categories, by different activities, how each of these contribute to total cost and what is the total cost of different levels of genetic monitoring, what is the contribution of different indicators, verifiers, activities that need to be performed, the differences between species and countries, and of course, the contributions of different cost categories. Chapter 8, Decision Support System. Decision Support System is aimed at policymakers to choose the most suitable forest genetic monitoring level according to the question they want to answer and the resources they have available. So in essence, it is a matrix that interlinks questions to be answered with different genetic monitoring levels. So it considers both the informational value and the cost of parameters. Additionally, recommendations on possible forest management actions are also included in this uh, decision support system. Finally, we shall look at the chapter nine about the genetic monitoring guidelines. Guidelines were developed with personnel conducting fieldwork in mind. So they include instructions on how to conduct plot establishment, different field measurements such as DBH and height and phenology observations. They were developed for seven different species or species complexes. Beside the two species that were analyzed during the project, namely the European beech and the silver fir King Boris's fir complex, we also developed guidelines for the following five species, the common ash, wild cherry, European black poplar, black pine, and pedunculate and sessile oak complex. A more detailed presentation on genetic guidelines is going to be given during the day. Thank you for your attention.